So, you want to know how to build a self-sufficient chicken house, huh? That's interesting. Because it just so happens that I have one right up there, way up there. So if you watched yesterday's video, or the other, the past video, I should say, where we did the mealworms and everything, and we have all this, you know, mealworm poop. We're going to take this and spread it out in the garden right here because it's a good fertilizer. It's definitely dusty, so you don't want to breathe it in too much. Yep, it's feeding time again. So I guess in order to understand better for you guys what self-sufficiency is, if you don't know what it is, basically being self-sufficient is you're not relying on anybody else. Um, you're not you know, purchasing food from anybody else. Um, there's a fine line there because you know, with chickens and stuff like that, you can solely grow stuff for them and you can solely just give them scraps and you know stuff that you can grow. Are they gonna get everything that they need? Maybe not, probably not. So with that being said, like for instance right here, I've got a couple bananas. They're way, way past prime for any of us to eat. So I'll peel these and I'll throw them in there with them. They'll pick at them, they'll eat them. We've thrown pumpkins in there with them. You know, that's another food source and there's none left. There is nothing. Even Jake says they were good. So Jake and Tom both agree that they were delicious. And there's a little bit of a rind of one down there, which you'll never see, but they're pretty much all gone. So they've, they've eaten them. You know, I feed wheat and stuff, which I do buy that, but I am growing my own. So really, I buy chicken feed, that's about it. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I have to buy. You can buy scratch feeds, you can buy, you can buy all kinds of different things and the money just adds up. The list keeps going on and on and on. So being self-sufficient, if you watched the last video, as I said earlier, with the whole mealworm production, that comes, comes into play with a lot more protein. If you can grow your own corn, that's the same thing. You know, you're gonna have more protein value in the corn as well, then you don't want to feed that to them all the time. You want to have like a balanced diet that you can like mix it up and so on and so forth. But this chicken house here, I built actually over the summer and I really wish I would have documented everything for you guys and did like a, a huge video series on it. Cause that would have been, that would have been really sweet actually watching the whole process. But this is what we got right here and I'll walk through everything. And this took, I think, roughly three months to build, some something like that. And it is fully solar powered. And I may have to add some more batteries because I didn't do like a full solar powered battery. But we'll walk inside here. And if you've seen the past feeding video where you see me come in here and do the feeding, this is a, I believe it's a 32 gallon trash can. And this is what I use for my feed. It's a lot better than a feeder. Um, you're not filling it as often. It's got three inch 45s in here and I'd pop one out, but the feed will probably overflow. But you can kind of see in there and there's the feed. So I have those all the way around and the chickens just stick their head in there. There is some on the floor as you can see, but compared to a regular feeder, there's that's minimal waste. Minimal waste is the biggest thing that you want to get out of a feeder because one of those standalone feeders or the hanging feeders, they pull it out, they throw it everywhere, they make a huge mess and then they don't touch it again and then it just rots on the floor. So there's hardly any waste here. And obviously I did this in the summer of 22. So that's all the waste really that we have. And they do continue to pick some off of the ground as you can see. But, so that's that. Here we have our light switches. And then I have a solar, all the solar wiring, the controller, and I have an inverter as well. This stuff all needs cleaned out. It's super dusty. Chickens give off a shit ton of dust. Um, so this is off right now because I think the battery's not, you know, capable of holding it. It's just a deep cycle marine battery. I probably should have used, you know, a standard solar battery, but I didn't. 
There's a controller. I think I got all this off of Amazon, the whole kit, and then ended up buying a second uh, solar panel up on the roof. So you can see right there now that the, uh, the battery is fully charged and the panels are currently charging. So basically all I gotta do, and I have this little flap here so the chickens will see the bright light because it is really bright. So there you can see we have zero watts because nothing's on at the moment. Basically you just flip the switch on, the lights turn on, turn back off and then I have a dust to dawn censored light outside and that's just flashing letting you know and obviously it's not going to come on right now because it's sensing that there's light and I covered the sensor and there it is. So that's kind of like a predator type thing to kind of deter coyotes, fox, raccoons I had a huge problem with before and you guys just think you can go wherever you want. Okay so anyway that's basically that portion of it. Like I said, I do have to get some more batteries because on a cloudy day, it doesn't really want to keep up the best. And I think that's because it just, it can't charge enough and there's not enough in the battery. So you can see the panels up there on the roof. They are currently getting solar charge, obviously, as I said. And I think the sun is hitting that second one over there. Um, as far as sizing, I think uh, I can tell you this one's a 30. 30 watt I believe and then this one I think is a hundred watt I could be wrong about that but I believe that's the system I went with all the windows here they do fold down for ventilation I have them up right now because it's cold but self-sufficiency you know I have lights out here I have power out here I can plug anything in that I need I could plug a heater in I can do pretty much anything that I need to with this solar setup that I have. And I also thought about doing something with a, a water heater to heat their water so it doesn't freeze in the winter time. And moving on to the next point, I do have a gutter on the top of here um, that all the rainwater goes into and then goes in that pipe. That's a three inch pipe that runs down. It's sloped barely, but it is. And then runs into this 44 gallon trash can. And Mr. Jake's gonna show off there for you a little bit, but this goes into just goes into with a hole into the top and i have to do some fixing with this because the chickens knock these loose all the time and they leak but it hasn't rained here in a little bit so and with it leaking it drains it out quicker but you can see there's ice back down in there now again yep i know i agree he is beautiful so anyway it catches anything leaves junk like that smaller debris it doesn't really catch but then it comes out through here. These drinkers work, you know, there's not enough water in there now, I have to fill it. But they'll come out, it'll run, and then when it weighs it down enough, it'll shut it off. Some of them work, some of them don't. It's kind of a trial and error thing, but it definitely does work. I have a clean outdoor right here that is basically gonna help you, you know, I can back up here with the four wheeler and with a trailer and just push all this stuff out. Now I have been kind of doing like a deep litter method is what I'm trying to do um, and that's you know we flip everything every so often and then put more shavings and stuff over the top but there again you know most times and if I can get the water sorted out to where I'm not having to fill it and where it's not leaking then it's going to be self-sufficient that way too where I'm not filling waters all the time again the winter time that's a little bit different but if I can get a heater or a fish tank aquarium heater that may work too plug that in and you know, it'll run off my solar and there again, then I'm not having to fill the water. So it's running all by itself. Another key feature that I really like and I've had past chicken coops where I didn't have it is the nest boxes on the outside. So you don't even have to go in the chicken house at all whatsoever. These things literally just pull down and you can see you can just grab the eggs right out and then they shut, which I have to trim some pieces again. They swell up with it being cold and get wet there's a whole bunch more eggs and there's more and then they just shut so it's really simple reach in grab the eggs you're done you don't even have to go inside the only time you're gonna have to go inside is obviously to clean uh maintenance or anything like that and fill the feeder and you're only filling the feeder you know depending on how many birds you have you may not have to fill the feeder if you only have like 10 chickens you'll be lucky if you fill that thing a month i don't know it all depends it depends what else you're giving your chickens stuff like that so we'll give the chickens these rotten bananas that are gonna be super gross to peel. 
chickens will literally eat pretty much almost anything, I feel like. And I just let everything in here, the peel and all that stuff. They'll even eat their own eggs, really, but I try to deter. You, won't, you don't really want to do that very much because then they'll get the taste for it and then they actually will start breaking their eggs in the coop. So they're already very curious at what I'm doing, which makes sense. They are a very curious animal. You will learn that if you don't have chickens now. So there's those. And pretty much right away, that's... And more and more of them will migrate over and, you know, start picking at them, eating them. I'm surprised they're picking at some of the peels more than they are the actual bananas. So this is obviously, in my opinion, really extravagant for a chicken house. You know, got all the trim pieces. It's kind of got like a board and batten look, which is not true board and battens, but it took a lot of time to do all that fine detail and get everything just right and paint everything and do all the trim. So I have a lot of time invested in this. But again, it turned out really nice, I think. And you know, some of you may not think it looks good, whatever, but you know, in my opinion, it looks nice for what I was expecting and compared to just doing all plain and plain Jane, you know what I mean? So the red and the, the white kind of pops, it's more of like a barn look. I do have intentions to move this down the road so it needs to be mobile, which I, I'm gonna try and maybe add wheels under it somehow or tires, whatever, at some point. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but this is where we're at so far and you know same thing you don't have to go in the coop to open the windows these just fold down like i said earlier then i do have like a weather stripping inside there you can kind of there's another window over there you can get cross ventilation and also one over there and then one on the end which is actually open right now i think that one's open along with the one in the end just to allow a little bit of ventilation because the smell does get strong in there and it's not escaping enough through the roof to you know ventilate it enough and you don't want the chickens breathing that in all the time so this thing's built out of you know solid wood it's built out of i went with two by threes instead of two by fours because the lumber prices are outrageous but basically just built stud walls and then did like a little lean-to roof which doesn't have a whole lot of pitch but you can see it definitely has i think it's like three inches of pitch something like that and it's enough that the water runs down runs into the gutter and I really haven't had any issues with, with snow. Again, you know, this is all some of this, it's all two by threes, two by fours. The walls are all two by threes. And then we got some plywood and stuff for separations for all the nest boxes. I think it's 12 nest boxes is what we have total. And then we have, you know, ripped down pieces for the, for the roost bars. Now these are 100% removable. So you just pop these out and you can throw them out of the way when you're cleaning so they're not really a, a nuisance and then they just pop right back in and you're good to go they're tight enough that they don't move back and forth so the chickens can't spin them and it actually looks like the chickens popped one out somehow so we'll throw that one back in there but otherwise they work really well and i'm gonna add another one in here down the road that way there's a little bit more space in here and you're going to try and escape. <laughs> and you may have thought that I just locked myself in, but it does have an actual pull cable here. And that actually is connected to this gate latch and that opens up that way. So it's really a simple build. There's not a whole lot really to it that's completely different. So it's pretty simple. I believe it's six foot wide by 12 foot long. So it's a pretty good size chicken house. And the door I just framed, you know, everything, everything here is framed. I made my own windows. So these windows are actually polycarbonate. So they're not glass. And that's mainly because glass would have been harder to get in here. So you can see on the ends here, there's actually a cut. So I ran these through the table saw at a certain depth and tried to get it right in the middle of the board. 
screwed all the boards together and then you slide this piece down in and boom you got your own window and then there's wire on the inside so these were really everything was really tedious but everything was really simple uh, to build it wasn't anything super hard you know any kind of somewhat carpentry background you can you know it's not hard and I'm not sure what she thinks she's doing or her The door, you don't even have to go in and un unlatch this to go in there. You don't even have to go in the run. Same thing with the water. If we get rain and those don't leak, you don't even have to go in there unless you have drought, then you got to fill it. But same thing with the door. I have it tied up with some rope that goes down to a carabiner. And that's basically you unlatch that from the eyelet there. And as soon as she gets out of the way, you basically just drop it down. And then when you want to open it in the morning, you just pull it down and latch it back in there and you're done. And it's super simple. The ramp, same thing, plywood, uh, one by twos, I believe these are for the battens and for the ramp. It's, it's super simple. It looks like a lot and it is, but it's, it's not that bad. Same thing under here, you know, just build a frame. And then underneath, I do have a lot of support you know, I got these, I think these are four by fours underneath and whether or not I needed them, I don't know, but I just put them under there just to be hundred percent safe. And these are treated two by fours for the, the whole way around. And I didn't, I could have used thicker flooring, but it's what I had laying around any scraps that you can, you know, potentially use. Definitely do it, especially with lumber prices today. Cause they're absurd. So that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm really forgetting anything. And that's, you know, everything, all the important aspects of it. And like I said, I think it, it took, everything took forever to do, painting it, you know, working on it after work. So it was, I think two gallons of red paint and it just took a lot of time, but that should be pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions on this or anything you wanna know, anything on the solar system, you know, not that solar system, this solar system. Anything on that, be sure to let it in the comment section below. I'll be I'll sh be sure to answer every, everything that I can, you know, answer for you guys and any information that you need, I'll be sure to get back to you. So hope that helped you guys. If you are looking to build your own chicken coop and need ideas or whatever, then, you know, hopefully this helps you some and you can get to building your own and being self-sufficient. So. I hope that helped you guys out and I hope you guys enjoyed. So I'll catch you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because you don't want to miss any more. I'll see you in the next video.